Okay, so we're going to build the neuron using Excel. So first thing we need to do is we're going to set up the inputs. We're going to have that fake input of X0. So X0, remember what we've been dealing with is X0 times the, the bias. So we have to create this fake input that's always 1. So that's what all X0 is here. It's always 1. So I feel like our real inputs, x1 and x2, are going to be 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. Okay. We're just going to deal with, if you like, binary. We then have to set a set of weights. W0, which is our bias, it's just a weight. So I'm just going to put some values in there. For the moment, it doesn't really matter what they are. We can change them later. In fact, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to create something that we just change the weights and we get a different function. So, the neuron is made up of two parts first part is we need that weighted sum. So it's going to be x0 times w0. I'm going to make a slight change because I only want to use put one set of weights in and it worked for all of them. I'm going to make the spreadsheet always use w0 when it's going to multiply one of the x0s. And I'm going to do it with this. I'm, with a spreadsheet, if you put a dollar sign between the two, the row and column numbers, letters, it will fix that. So you can always use that. I'm going to keep doing that. So we're going to use x0 times x1, sorry, helps to use the right thing, x1 times w1, and I'm going to make it use that particular value of x1, oops, and I'm going to do, carry this on. Keep doing that. And I'm just going to cut and paste that. To do the remaining ones. Okay. So if we look at this, it's going to multiply x0 on row 4 by those x0, x1 and x2 by those weights. If I go to the next one, the next one, it's going to keep using those those weights. So use them once and keep, you know, just write them once, use them as many times as we want. Okay. The second part of the neuron is that thresholding idea. So we're going to use an if here that says if this is greater or equal to zero, then what do we do if it's true? We say it's one. What do we do if it's false? We say it's zero, yeah? So we built it so that if the net, this weighted sum, is greater or equal to zero, we get a one out, otherwise we get a zero out. And we can cut and paste those again. Okay. I've marked a column here called desired. It's just there so we can check how we got the right answer. 
So let's try and produce uh, an AND. Okay. So we can see at the moment this doesn't match this. It only matches for the last one. Well, one of the things that we can do to start off with is deal with this row here, where the x1 and x2 are both zero, which means it doesn't matter what the weight is, it doesn't affect it. The only thing that affects that is w0. And we're, we're kind of trying to get this, we've got a 1, but we've got a 0 is what we're looking for. This suggests that y is a bit big. Okay, And the only thing that can control that at the moment is that. So, okay, let's make it smaller. Well, what's smaller? We could try 0, we could try minus 1. Let's try minus 1. Now, it's now worked for 0, 0. It pulled it below 0 and got, got a 0 output here. Sorry, here. But it hasn't worked for those. And if we look at these weighted sum values here, they're too big, aren't they? You know, if we want to get a 0 here, this number here has to go below 0 as well. So we could try changing these weights and see what effect they have. Not much. Perhaps if we made them smaller, we might get some effect. Okay. Seems to have done something. That one's now become zero. All right, let's try making that one smaller than it was. It's worked. We've now got our and output. Our y here matches our desired here. 